Good morning and welcome to Sunday the 15th of January. I have just pulled up in the car park uh, at the Marriott Hotel in Waltham Abbey because I'm here for the Waltham Abbey Wall Show. Um, I come most years now with my friend Sarah who you will know if you watch the Yarn Mugs podcast. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's a really nice start to the year usually. Really nice gentle show and a lovely venue. Uh, obviously <laughs> I don't need any more yarn and actually one of my goals for this year is to really declutter my crafting supplies that it's taking over a little bit and it's a bit overwhelming so um, I'm coming to this show with a budget I've set myself a 25 pound absolute maximum budget that doesn't include the entry fee which was I can't remember what because Sarah bought the tickets um, and I will be refunding her today. Uh, but I've bought my lunch, uh, sorry, brought my lunch with me so I don't have to worry about uh, that. And obviously I don't have to spend £25, I could spend nothing if I wanted to. Uh, but it's about uh, still being able to come and enjoy a yarn show without uh, ending up with more than I need basically. Uh, yeah, so because I love coming to the yarn shows, they're so inspirational. It's lovely to meet so many like-minded people, get ideas, see all the patterns and the samples and what people are dying and so on. So I just thought it'd be interesting to sort of see what it would be like to experience that with quite a tight budget. Although £25 is a lot really, isn't it? So uh, I thought I'd film a little vlog about my day at the yarn show and how that goes. You can see lots of people arriving in their hand knits and so on. I'm just waiting for Sarah to arrive, so I'm going to sit and catch up on some messages whilst I wait. And my be one of my very best friends in the world has just messaged me, actually, to say she might pop along. She lives not far from here, so who knows? Maybe I might see her too. Okay, welcome to the 10th annual Waltham Abbey Wool Show. Uh, Waltham Abbey is a town just north of London in Essex and I'm going to talk you through everything we saw. I didn't film everyone but we started off just inside the door with Charlie uh, Darning. She is a UK illustrator and knitting designer and her website says she specialises in the weird and wonderful. I especially loved her cat's pyjamas knitting patterns with their little eye masks for sleeping and their cute little stripy jumpers and she also designed knitted versions of the show's mascot Doris the Sheep. Here's Folkestone Harbour Yarn, they are based in Kent, whoop whoop, just like me and their ethos is producing hand dyed yarns that are sustainable and kind to the environment and supporting British farmers. They also sell notions and kits like this little purse kit which I really liked the name of of course for obvious reasons, my youngest daughter is called Phoebe. They also sell cute little notions. and patterns and who can resist some beach hut bunting. Woolly Chic is Helen and you'll recognise her stall from many of my previous yarn show visits. Helen's wool is produced from the fleece of sheep on her family farm in Wales and she also sells her award-winning heart spun yarn which is 70% 70, 70 blue face leicester and 30% tensile which is a renewable wood pulp fibre and of course, lots of gorgeous patterns. Pickle Lily is Joe and Ewan selling knitting goodies, bags, DPN holders, etc., in cute fabrics and designs, as well as gorgeous little handmade toys like I Spy bags and play mats. And I love their little simple tote bags and knitting pouches. One of my most favourite little knitting bag is from Jo at Pickle Lily. It's the simplest little bag with poppers and I use it all the time. It's just like this little robin size one and they're perfect for just popping in your rucksack or your handbag. This is the Knit Knacks who is Monica Russell. She sells knitting kits and patterns and has written 10 books of knitting patterns. The gorgeous Fair Isle Bears you see here is her pattern called Fergus, Fergus the Bear, and it's available as a pattern or a kit on her website. And I will link everybody and all their websites underneath. 
Joe from the Isle of Wight is Lilliput White. She sells homewares inspired by the coast, including driftwood buttons and sea glass jewellery and these gorgeous tactile rope bowls. I think I look at this yellow rope bowl every yarn show I go to. I think I'm going to have to admit defeat and, and buy one soon. <laughs> Sporting an amazing new logo. The lonely knitter is Laura. She's from Suffolk and she's well known for her natural crafters balm. But she also sells the most beautiful hand dyed yarn and knitting patterns. And Laura is also the organiser behind the East Anglia Yarn Festival, which I will talk about a little bit later. So here we are at the Travel Knitter store. It's Larissa. She's based in East London, where I lived for many, many years and where Lilia was born. And she dyes yarns inspired by her travels. This is the gorgeous hive shawl by Mana Gilligan of Onkatine Biag. Her, I hope I've said that right. Her store was so packed I couldn't get in to film it, so I could only just film the pattern. But I'm so glad I did because not only is it an absolutely beautiful colour using her yarn, but now I'll remember that pattern. Adventures in Yarn Craft is Laura. She sells hand-dyed yarn, accessories and books. I bought some lovely uh, needle uh, stoppers from her at the Southern Wool Show last September. Don't feel I really managed to capture everything in as much detail I did in the vlog I made for last year's show in 2022. I will link that vlog underneath as well if you want to see what it was like then. So I hope that this is still interesting and there's still lots to discover. Oh, there's Sarah. <laughs> this is Emily Cross Ceramics. Uh, she is a ceramic artist from Somerset and she sells yarn bowls, of which my mum owns one magnetic pin dishes and needle minders, mugs and just gorgeous tactile ceramics. I really like the magnetic uh, pin uh, needle minders and pin dishes, it was such a good idea. Just browsing around, do not need a new mug, put the mug down, walk away from the mug, even if it is gorgeous. And my mum owns one of her yarn bowls in a gorgeous deep red colour and it's just like a piece of art. I suppose it is a piece of art. Snugby Stars Yarns is lovely Gemma and usually her husband and kids too. Uh, at least one of her children was there at the show doing some fabulous crocheting at the stall. She sells beautiful hand dyed yarn, prints, accessories and supplies. Yarn is cheaper than therapy. Very true. Look at this gorgeous colourwork hat. I'm not sure what the pattern is, but I will try and find out. The knitting shed is Nicola and Louise. They are sisters and they sell the most beautiful yarn under their Ainsworth and Prin range, as well as patterns, kits, notions. They are very well known for their bunny, sock and mitten blockers. And I am the proud owner of some mitten blockers from them. Allium Threads is Nikki who sells naturally dyed yarns as well as patterns, kits and bags. I really love this hot water bottle cover. The yarn was so smooth and lovely. I thought it was cotton but it was actually a uh, Corridale. And Sarah and I both love these mittens. This has got uh, stitching on the top embroidered on and she sold kits for these. Yarn Tings is Charmaine, a totally new to me vendor. I've never seen her before at a yarn show and she possibly has the best logo ever. It's amazing. She's a yarn dyer, a theatre maker, musician and she started dyeing yarn and fibre as an extension of her fine art painting practice. She's just, there's just so much creativity here. Her colours are amazing. She also dyes fibre. Look at that. 
It's just such a gorgeous combination of colours. Why is everything tangled? <laughs> because it's a yarn. And here I am destroying her stall and knocking everything flying. Yarn mixology, I had to stand back. I couldn't get too close or I would have just bought all of these. Uh, Christine sells uh, what she calls bobbles, which are drums of stranded yarn. They're 50% cotton, 50% acrylic, and they're hand wound in gradients and they're all just beautiful. Sarah did actually succumb and, and buy a bobble. Yarn she like is lovely Marcia and her stool helper Gail uh, selling eco-friendly plant-based yarns. She's a regular at Chatsworth Road Market in London and she also sells at many of the UK yarn shows. The yarn is so gorgeous and it's wonderful to have an alternative to animal fibres and they are all so soft, so soft. I was buying some extra soy cotton yarn for a hat I'm making but I'll show you all my purchases at the end of the vlog. I sit down and have a little chat with you about what I bought for my £25 budget. Will I stick to it? That's the question. Creative Anarchy Yarn is Hannah and her goal is to try and keep her yarn as accessible as possible. Her sweater kits actually get cheaper the bigger the size required. Lots of gorgeous jewel tones here. Third Vault Yarns, one of my absolute favourites. Lola dyed the three yarns you can see in the cardigan I'm wearing in this vlog. There's two dye lots of Mazakine and a one of a kind. These are the Orbital Mitts, which I may have bought the pattern for after the show, so doesn't have to be included in the budget. So here we are, stopping for lunch. It was sitting on the floor room only. <laughs> I'm admiring some of the purchases made by my friend Kate. Uh, she bought this gorgeous pattern and that tea towel from Tilly Flop that you just saw. And speaking of Tilly Flop, that was our next stop after lunch. Uh, Tilly Flop Designs is Julie. She sells Fibercraft inspired stationery that's just really funny and cheeky and cute. Coastal Crochet is Eleonora Tully. She's a crochet designer and teacher and she was the show's VIP guest this year. She often runs crochet alongs for her beautiful crochet blanket designs. Riven it, Becky and Marcus and their dangerously tempting stall of muted rainbow delights. <laughs> This is a crochet stormy rainbow blanket, uh, which is so effective, really like this. There's also a knit version called the Scottish rainbow blanket. If anyone knows what this pattern is, please tell me. There wasn't a tag on it and Marcus was busy with a customer so I couldn't ask and I haven't been able to find it by searching online afterwards. So if you do know what the pattern is, please drop me a comment or send me a message on Instagram. Soft Accents is another completely new to me seller. Her name is Jackie and she makes and sells bags, pouches and purses in a range of beautiful fabrics including African wax print fabric which is just so bold and gorgeous and I had to have a proper serious internal talk with myself here as I really, really don't need any more bags no matter how tempting they were. I mean I, I don't need any more bags do I? Maybe one? Fruitful Fusion is Ishrat. She's based in Nottingham and, Nottingham and her yarn is divine. I confess to never having bought any of her yarn, despite being in love with it every time I see it. I will need to rectify this this year, I feel. Jeanette Sloan really needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyway. She is a knitwear designer, teacher and writer and the creator of BIPOC in Fibre, which is an interactive directory of BIPOC fibre artists around the world. 
This shawl is partly inspired by Bridgerton and I was so taken with it. It's called Chandra's shawl and I'll talk about it a bit later. The little grey girl is Jem. She sells handmade bags, hand dyed yarn and notions. Love the prints, especially this panda print on the pyramid project bag. And Sarah and I were both very, very taken with this gorgeous self-striping yarn that she dyes. So lovely. And just behind there, you could see uh, Laura of Bellica Yarns was restocking some of her bags. So she sells uh, project bags, accessories, hand-dyed yarn and all manner of gorgeous creations and ooh, pom-poms. Skeen Queen is Rachel. She's based in Berkshire and she sells small batch hand-dyed yarn as well as kits and patterns. Is it me or am I drawn to peach yarns at this show? I think this is like the third peach yarn that I've zoomed in on. Oh, so many gorgeous yarns laid out. Okay, this is another new to me one. This is Namolio. They make and sell supplies and accessories and they love linen especially, like this gorgeous wax spun no wet spun linen thread which i wish i'd got a little skein of to try out with maybe some freestyle crochet stone covers next time they also sold these gorgeous handmade lavender pouches they were so pretty their instagram feed is beautiful actually it's worth going to take a look at The Yarn Whisperer is Kaiti and he sells hand-dyed yarns from sustainably sourced British suppliers and I love how creative he gets with his yarn collections and ideas. The Potting Shed is a project to use stash yarn in 2023 combined with upcycled bits for gorgeous little projects like these knitted and crocheted plants. I put this here so you can pause it and have a little look at the hashtag and everything. Under the olive tree is Jem. She sells patterns and hand dyed yarn as well as kits and knitty gifts like these coasters. I really like the wine and knitting one. That's me. Also tea and knitting, also me. Jem is also one of the organisers of the Cambridge Yarn Festival, which is a series of events that runs throughout the year. So my final stop was at Wool Decanted, another completely new one on me. It's Linda and Lisa who live on a houseboat with their cat and uh, they produce blended British wool in small batches, traceable and sustainable. Their yarn labels and everything are inspired by wine and include vintages and tasting notes, which was something I really liked. I can really get on board with that. They were really lovely to talk to as well and this was my final stop so I missed loads of other vendors. It was such a busy show so partly it was because I couldn't get into the stalls to film them and also because I was so busy chatting to people and just having a lovely time. Uh, but I was so pleased to be able to film some of the new vendors that I'd never seen before. I love this hat pattern, very clever. It's called the... Uh, ESP hat. I am in my car at the end of an amazingly lovely day. I spoke to so many lovely people. If you were one of the people that stopped and said hello, I hope I didn't come across as a complete numpty. <laughs> it was just so lovely to meet so many interesting positive, kind people who said hello and were just really encouraging and lovely. Thank you so much. Um, and I got to spend time with my lovely friend Sarah, who is Yarn Mugs. If you don't watch Sarah's channel, she is Yarn Mugs. Go, go over there, I'll link her underneath because she's got an absolutely gorgeous knitting and crochet podcast. And she does vlogs as well. She's such a calm person. She's lovely to watch. 
I know I keep saying lovely. It's just such a great word for describing what I'm talking about. <laughs> and Kate, of course, joined us. Kate is, uh, she's not, she's not on YouTube or anything like that. We just got to know her. She's been a very good supporter of my podcast and um, we've just got to know each other really. And we had a lovely time, the three of us sitting, having lunch and having a really good chat. It's really, really, it was such a good day. So I feel all energized now, which is quite rare for me in any other kind of big social busy situation. But when it's a yarn show, I always feel energized afterwards. Whereas any other situation. If that was a party, I'd feel drained and like I needed to lie down for a week. So I'm going to get home and I will show you. I'm going to keep listening to my audio book. It's still light. It's a lovely dry day, perfect driving weather. I'm going to listen to my audio book, get home and I will show you what I bought. Oh, I am home. Oh, it's terrible lighting. And I've got uh, extra piece of furniture just next to me here because we've just dismantled well not just yesterday we dismantled Phoebe's cabin bed because she's getting a new bed so it's now in bits all over the house whilst we are ebaying it so I thought I'd just end the day by showing you what I bought but my battery light is already flashing at me so fingers crossed hopefully that will compel me not to ramble oh I've got lots of leaflets in here so first of all, I just wanted to mention that, um, so the Wolfham Abbey wool show is obviously in Wolfham Abbey. It's every January and it's one of my favourite ones because it's such a lovely way to start the year. And I picked up a couple of leaflets and was told about a couple of other yarn festivals happening in the UK this year. So one of them is the Summer Wool Festival, it used to be known as Fibre East, now the Summer Wool Festival at Redbourne School in Amp Hill. Amp, how do you say it? Amp, I'll, I'll just show you. Amp Hill. Um, which looks great so that's going to be happening in July and lots of the vendors that I saw there today were certainly going to be there so that's really good and they're doing another one so the same people that run the Southern Wool Show do they also now run the Summer Wool Festival? I'm not sure anyway the some, same people that run the Southern Wool Show in Newbury which you've seen me go to before I got a new one starting this year it's the North East Wool Show it's uh, in the middle of August and it's in Newcastle. So I'll just do this so you can pause it. And look at the leaflet, isn't that great? <laughs> the Angel of the North there. So that's really great, a new one. And the other one is in Norfolk on Mother's Day weekend, Saturday the 18th and Sunday the 19th of March, um, is the East Anglia Yarn Festival, which has got the cutest little logo look at that oh i'm gonna have to change my battery i knew i wouldn't make it right give me a sec there we go we're all batteried up now let's see if that one lasts so i stuck within my 25 pound budget and it was really good actually because i like to go to yarn shows um and giving myself a budget of whether that's 10 pounds 15 pounds 20 pounds 25 pounds um or whatever I feel I can afford, uh, was a really good way to do it because yarn shows aren't, for me anyway, just about the shopping. It's about getting ideas and seeing what people are dyeing, seeing all the pattern samples, seeing things knit up. And you get talking to so many people, whether it's other visitors to the show or the vendors, and everyone is so interesting. Everyone's so knowledgeable and I just feel I come away with so so much more that I've learned about this craft and this world that I so enjoy So that's you know, that's equally part of it as you know coming home with a few goodies So it worked really well for me So I feel like I might be able to maybe go to a few more yarn shows set myself a low budget and just enjoy it Okay, so what did I spend my money on? first of all so we did a whole round and then, and Sarah was buying, oh, I've just remembered there was one thing I meant to buy and I didn't, I was going to buy the Waltham Abbey wool show pin. <sighs> I have to wait till next year now. Uh, and I could have done it as well because that would have been within budget, I think, because I had a bit left over. So uh, we did a whole round of the show and then we sat down, we had a bit of a chat and some lunch and then we went back and made our purchases. Although Sarah did make a few purchases like before we'd even taken our coats off, which was very impressive. Well done, Sarah. Uh, and one of the first things I saw in the first room was this kit and I couldn't get it out of my head so 
I went back and bought it and it was very reasonably priced at £13. It's from the Knitting Shed. The lovely ladies at the Knitting Shed. Oh, I'll take it out actually so that it, there won't be any glare on it. So here's the pattern. They're colour work mittens. I'm currently nearly finishing a colour work hat and I want to keep my hand in and do some more and it's only two colours per row so that's good and they look they're quite a small project obviously so I bought the kit I bought this particular uh, colour combination because they had various samples made up so it's the serif mitts by the knitting shed and you get the four balls of Jameson, Jameson, Jameson and Smith the <laughs> two ply uh, come on camera there we go uh, there they are obviously not in the best light because we are under uh, false light now uh, but you get those four and the pattern for £13 so that was my first purchase I also bought from Marcia uh, and uh, also Gail who's helping out at uh, Yarns You Like who's very local to the Waldenham Abbey Wall Show. She said you could, she lived right nearby. So it's a really handy show for, from her. And they were, Waldenham Abbey Wall Show were celebrating their 10, 10th year this year. And Marcia was saying she's done seven of those years, which is amazing. Uh, and she sells all uh, uh, plant-based yarns, uh, cotton and uh, popcorn and soy and so on. And I bought two balls of this burgundy colour of her soy cotton yarn to make a hat for my friend who currently has no hair due to chemo treatment. And because it's so, so soft. But I'm halfway through making that hat and I've decided I want to make it a bit thicker and warmer. So I'm actually gonna rip it back and make it a double knit. I'm gonna hold the yarn double. And if I'm doing that, I just knew that I would probably need an extra ball of this. So I picked one of those up. That was 5 99 which brings my total up to 5 99 plus 13, that's 19, 18.99 so far. So that's the other thing I bought. And then I bought this. What did I say I was up to? 18.99. I saw this at uh, the Pickle Lily stand and I love Jo's things. She makes the most gorgeous little bags and notions and educational and tactile kids toys that are all handmade and I've got a few of her little bags and notion things so I bought this because it had frogs on it it was the only one I could see with frogs on it and when I was growing up I used to collect frogs and it made me feel a bit nostalgic and I just loved the colours and uh, I needed an extra DPN holder so I treated myself to that and that was £3.50 so that is now do you know what Let's not humiliate myself by trying to do maths in my head. Let's just get this on the calculator. 1899 plus £3.50. Okay, so we're up to £22.49. I then got this, but I didn't buy this. This was a gift from Jo herself at Pickle Lily. That's her card. And she said, she gave me this as a gift because it's yellow and it's one of her gorgeous little notions pouches. You've got a little ring here to keep your stitch markers and bits and bobs on. This this uh, tape measure ribbon is what you use to tie it. And then on inside here, you've got this little bit as well. So you can hook your uh, progress keepers on there as well. You can get heavy scissors in there. So I'm going to put this into use straight away. Finally, I bought a pattern. Now, my friend Kate, who I met up with while we were there, uh, she bought this pattern and I looked at it and I thought, oh, that does look nice. And then I went and saw the sample at Jeanette Sloan's stall and I couldn't get that out of my head either. Now, I won't be making it in these colours, but and it's hard to show you from the pictures because it's a very, very big wrap. It's called Shonda's Shawl. It's by Jeanette Sloan. And it has... It's, it's almost like a really long, wide wrap that's like a sampler. So it has all different sections um, in it. So, and all I could think was, it'd be brilliant because I will learn some new techniques because there's certainly stuff in here, like this bit here and this bit here, uh, which I've never done before. So I'll learn some new techniques and I won't get bored because 
by the time I get bored with the section, I'm going to be moving on to something else. It's also made in DK weight and it's very big. So I think it's going to be a fantastic stash buster, which is what I need this year. And how much have I got left? So I've got £2.51 left. And because I don't, I can't remember, I just use my card to pay for this and I can't remember how much it is. So let's just say this was £2.51 and that brings me up to £25. <laughs> There we go, I've done brilliantly. And that was my day. So once again, oh, and I forgot to say as well, I got to meet Denise at last from Dear Designs and she was wearing the most fabulous flamingo jumper and it wasn't until afterwards that I wished I'd snapped a little selfie with her so I could have put it on. And I bumped into one of my best friends in the world. Becky was there with her sister because she, she lives only half an hour away as well. So I bumped into her a few times and I wish I'd taken some pictures of some of the people I was with today, but the day just whizzes past. It goes so fast and it was just such a good day. So now I'm going to go and take a couple of paracetamol because I've got a thumping headache. I'm going to have a, a few pints of water and then a glass of Prosecco. <laughs> and I'll see you again in the next video thank you so much for watching uh, don't forget to hit like if you've enjoyed this video and if you're not already don't forget to subscribe it really 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 helps my channel to grow and uh, for that I thank you and I'll see you again very soon bye